good afternoon friends uh, welcome to this uh, session on the computational modeling and simulation uh, with us uh, we have professor uh, arup kumar das uh, he is a well known name in the field of computational modeling uh, and simulation uh, currently he is working in the department of mechanical and industrial engineering at uh, iit roorkee uh, he has received his uh, masters and uh, phd degree from indian institute of technology kharagpur uh, after uh, the degree phd he has received in 2010 he is a recipient of uh, various prestigious awards that includes uh, kn sitharamu award uh he has also received a medal for young researcher from indian society of heat and mass transfer in 2019 uh he is also the recipient of young scientist award by indian national science academy in 2015 his current research interests are focused on uh, two phase flows uh multifluidics uh microfluidics uh biofluidic boiling heat transfer and numerical methods and of course uh, he has authored more than uh, 100 peer reviewed journals and uh, he has uh, uh, six patents uh, registered under his name so he will be talking about uh, uh, multi scale modeling of contact line dynamics using combined volume of fluid method and molecular dynamics simulation over to you sir thank you professor uh, ramdeep i think uh, i'm audible uh, i'm uh, sorry that i'm in low band with john so i have to switch off no issue sir okay uh, first of all uh, let me thank uh, the society and uh, uh, for uh, uh, choosing me uh, for this uh, uh, this uh, here i was talking about uh, have to deal with uh, multiple scales so for macro scale one can do more finite diffusion methods whereas in my we have to deal with the molecular scale so molecular dynamic simulations one need to go ahead and uh, in between there are some mesoscale uh, techniques also uh, which are mainly uh, uh, lagrangian based models like sph or lbm uh now what we are trying to do over here is that develop a multi scale modeling where uh, you know a combined molecular dynamics and continuum scale we have uh, tried to develop and uh, this has been started by oconnell and thompson in 1995 uh, for single phase flow for multi phase flow we are trying to implement that can you go to the next one please yeah but uh, today only i'll be talking about uh, this multi scale modeling in the context of contact angle and contact line motion now few uh, terminologies which we need to deal with uh, that is actually uh, over here uh, uh, we know that depending on the surface solubility we may have hydrophobic or hydrophilic uh, contact at the same time uh, this will be governed by the Uh, surface tension solid liquid solid gas and liquid gas which is governed by the young dupre equation and uh, if there is any contact line motion so obviously we'll be having the uh, advancing and receding contact angle due to picture but what is important over here is that if we are having some sort of uh, contact so molecular forces uh, will be actually deciding that whether it will be sticking or slipping over the surface and then uh, what will be the exact uh, contact angle in situ contact angle that will be decided in this context contact angle hysteresis will be also one important phenomenon yeah next one please uh, now uh, in this uh, slide i had a movie of different uh, uh, droplet manipulations technique uh, but uh, as it is a uh, pdf file that those cannot be run but i'll explain it in the left hand side you can see that uh, thermo capillary driven droplet motion which is very popular in this uh, direction on the other hand magnetic field acoustic field and uh, uh, passive wettability gradient can be also used for droplet manipulation today mainly we will be discussing about uh, some sort of wettability gradient driven droplet motion and side by side i'll be showing you electric field driven droplet motion also next slide please 
Uh, here, uh, I have actually tried to show you that uh, droplet can be manipulated using electric field. And based on the uh, uh, type of electric field, whatever you are giving for manipulation of weightability or uh, use the dielectric liquid, we may have electroweighting type of phenomena or it can be liquid dielectrophoresis type of phenomena. So these two uh, separate branches have been actually developed uh, um, long back. And you can see that uh, these are very popular for droplet manipulating. I will not go into detail of these two techniques, but I will today try to show you that how uh, numerically these uh, uh, things can be captured, first using some uh, uh, macro scale technique, and then finally I will be showing you some uh, micro scale technique before going to the uh, multi scale. So next slide, please. Yeah, so here, uh, first I'll be trying to show you some coupled uh, electrohydrodynamic simulations using electrostatic actuations. Details of this uh, can be found out this, in this paper. Yeah, please go to the next one. Yeah, so uh, what we have exactly done over here in the left-hand side, uh, right-hand side figure, you can see that we are having three electrodes. So out of that one will be grounded electrode. And then we'll be having two electrodes side by side and uh, we'll be giving the charge to the main uh, central electrode, the red colored one. And the droplet will be actually uh, placed in, at the junction. And due to this uh, charge density, there will be some electrostatic force developed. And you may find out droplet will be actually transferring from one plate to another plate. Now, if you continue switching the electrodes, then you may find out that is sustainable movement of the droplet over the surface can be done. Now, uh, to model that, we are actually uh, doing some sort of electrohydrodynamic simulation. So mainly volume of fluid based method uh, we have done over here. And uh, for as a tool, uh, we have used Jerry's flow solver. And as you know that we have to also solve the conservation equation for free charge. So we have actually charge density equation also written at the bottom of this, this slide, okay, two equations. And the properties we actually define based on the average void fraction alpha. Okay, yeah, go to the next one, please. Yeah, so the modeling uh, technique is actually based on some sort of uh, uh, quartile discretization and adaptive quartile discretization. So here also I had a movie at the bottom, uh, but uh, uh, let me explain the movie. You can see even vertical wall can be climbed by the droplet due to the uh, electric field application. If the charge density or electric force is too high, um, over and above the uh, gravitational uh, pull in the downward direction, you find out droplet can climb back on top also okay so next one please here uh, i have shown you uh, two different situations so some videos were there but uh, let me explain that uh, the droplet can move over some uh, vertical surface 90 degree incline you can see in the left hand side figure and uh, 45 degree incline also it can climb so uh, in these two figure i about uh, videos rather i we tried to show you that you know there will be advancing contact angle properly captured using um, macro scale simulation and side by side visiting contact angle has been also captured properly uh, so this has been done for uh, macro scale drop you can see one millimeter diameter and actuation potential is somewhere in the range of 40 volt yeah next one please So here uh, I have showed you uh, some vorticity pattern to describe that there will be some internal circulation of the droplet so that it can climb uh, the, uh, the surface. And you will be finding out that uh, these internal circulations can be captured while using uh, macro scale simulation volume fluid based simulation. Okay. Uh, so junction, what happens, I have shown you in the inset figure. So you can see there in the inset, you may have uh, uh, some plunge of the liquid towards the surface, and that will be actually creating some sort of uh, two, uh, uh, you can see over here vortices, okay, uh, counter vortices, and that actually allows the droplet to advance in the upward direction. Next one, please. Yeah, so there are effect of, uh, you know, application of voltage. So using the, um, you know, amount of uh, voltage, whatever you are uh, giving, so that the droplet motion can be enhanced. So in this slide, in the figure, I have shown you that one only. The 50 volt is given droplet will be moving faster, whereas in the 30 volt droplet motion will be there. Uh, sufficient electric force is being generated, but the droplet motion will be slow. Next one, please. 
yeah, there will be effect of inclination also, as because you can understand that gravitational field will be actually applicable over there. So actually the electric force and gravitational force, they're competing. So obviously effect of inclination will be also there. This macroscopic simulation has properly captured that. The right-hand side figure exactly shows that. Next one, please. Yeah, then uh, this uh, motion, uh, this, this kind of simulation can be also put forward for breaking and making of interfaces. Here I have given you example of droplet coalescence. Exactly the same phenomena, whatever I have described for droplet motion has been utilized over here for bringing two droplets near to each other and then see they are merging, okay? So uh, the phenomena is once again, same droplet has been put in the junction of the electrodes and then their motion has brought them near to each other. So this has been also mod modeled using some macroscopic simulation. Next one, please. So here in this left-hand side, though I had a movie in the right-hand side, but let us concentrate on the left-hand side figure only. So you can see the droplets are actually coming near to each other. And at some point of time, a fluid channel is actually being created. The channel is enlarging in size. And at some point of time, you can find out unification happens, but that unification will be continuing. There will be some oscillation, inherent oscillation in the droplet motion. And you will be finding out slow, slowly, but steadily this will be uh, dumping down and then you'll be finding out the unified uh, shape of the droplet, okay? Next one, please. Yeah, so here I have tried to show you that what happens in the uh, uh, physics of the uh, margin. So you can see those counter rotating uh, vortices are still there, but these counter rotating vortices are actually moving up as the fluid channel is being established. So you may find out that these vortices are actually bringing the droplets near to each other and then finally unification happens. Okay, so uh, so these are the different stages of coalescence we have actually predicted using a macro scale simulation. Next one, please. Yeah, you can go to the next one also to in. Uh, yeah, so uh, this uh, perfectly works for the dissimilar droplets also. You can see a larger size droplet and smaller size droplet whenever these are placed uh, on those electrode surfaces. You can find out a, a fluid, uh, uh, you know, jet is being created. You can see the figure E in the right hand side. There was a movie, but let me not concentrate on that. So there was a fluidic jet created. So this jet actually uh, absorbs, gate absorbs, and then this jet finally the shape of the droplet you can see in the uh, figure F, okay? So dissimilar droplet breaking and making of interfaces can be handled using uh, this kind of macroscopic simulation. Next one, please. Yeah, so you can go ahead. Next one, please. Yeah, you can further go ahead. So here we have tried to show some sort of uh, micro scale uh, simulation next. So here uh, in the same kind of electroweighting uh, kind of simulation in nanoscale, we have tried to see further details of the simulations can be found out in these two papers. Okay, next one, please. So uh, exactly what happens over here, we tried to see in nanoscale the weighting pattern. So as you know that there can be Cassie-Baxter state or Wengel state when the droplet will be coming in contact with the uh, base of the surface and not will be, it will not be floated on top of the pillars. So that is called Cassie-Baxter state. And whenever it will be contacting the base of the surface, it is called Wengel state. So both we have captured, and not only capturing by giving electric field, this uh, uh, mode of weighting in nanoscale can be also altered. Next one, please. So these are uh, molecular dynamic simulations. So we have actually done uh, uh, balance of potential energy and Coulombic force to calculate the uh, uh, final force on each molecule. And this has been done using uh, LAMP software. Okay, uh, next one, please. So uh, we have actually taken different types of uh, water models. So SPC model is uh, one of the models which we have tried. Some of the simulations today I'll be showing you with SPC model. The parameters of SPC model for electric charge and other bond angles are shown over here. Next one, please. Yeah, here uh, I, I have shown uh, two videos, but unfortunately the videos are not here in this uh, uh, presentation as it is a PDF file. But in the left-hand side, uh, we have shown that uh, whenever there is uh, no electric field, so it will be uh, staying at Cassie-Baxter state. 
But once the electric field of 0 0.007 uh, E is actually being applied, charge concentration is applied, the drop will be penetrating inside the pillars and one can find out that there will be some sort of uh, wind gel state created. Okay, so this simulation is in the nanoscale, molecular scale. Next one, please. Yeah, so uh, then we have tried to vary the pillar size and pillar spacing and pillar uh, you know, height variation. So here some of the simulations are shown. You can find out in the right hand side figure that the droplet which is starting uh, uh, to be in Wengel state at the beginning, once the height is changed, it is actually converted into Cassie Baxter state. And the pillar size, pillar spacing is also very important in this direction. Okay, next one, please. Yeah, uh, we try to also see the uh, journey of molecules. So you can see that once the molecule goes inside the pillar in the right hand side figure, so you can find out that green colored molecule, it stays inside. So it cannot come up due to its, uh, due to its uh, interaction potential with the other molecules. So this creates this kind of uh, molecule deposition inside the well creates the uh, Wengel state from the Cassie Baxter state. Okay, in the left hand side figure, we have also show the time average density contour, which perfectly shows that uh, Cassie Baxter state is converting into Wengel state. Next slide, please. Next slide, let us go to the next one also in short of as we are having short of time. So this uh, all this kind of uh, nano droplets uh, electroding actuation can be also seen for droplet translation, which we have exactly seen few slides back in case of uh, uh, macro scale simulation. So here also similar kind of pattern has been created. You can see that silicon strips has been given and these are alternatively charged. And once again, the droplet, you can see on top of the uh, silicon strip, it is seated. And one by one, whenever you'll be doing switching, you may find out the droplet will be translating in the forward side. The video in the right hand side was showing that, but unfortunately the video is not running. So let us see the uh, next if I'm having some snap. Next one, please. Yeah, so here in this image, uh, at least you can see that the droplet is translating in the left hand side figure over time, three different uh, snapshots have been shown at three different points. Okay, so arrow marks are showing the time frame. So you can see the top figure is at zero time and then uh, the, the, the bottom most figure is actually at zero point somewhere, 0 0.1 nanosecond. And then finally the droplet has advanced at 0 0.4 nanosecond. So this kind of translation of droplet can be seen. Okay. And contact angle also varies. So you can see the contact angle variation information, which is definitely one micro scale information in the right hand side figure. Okay, so as the droplet progresses, the contact angle changes. So which was not there exactly in the macro scale simulation. Okay, either you have to go ahead with a constant contact angle or you have to feed some governing law. Okay, so there are various governing laws nowadays, but those are actually empirical in nature. So that's why we tried to see that what happens in the molecular scale. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, here we have tried to show that what happens to the charge density and the corresponding number of hydrogen bonds. We have seen that the hydrogen bonds are aligned in such a fashion that it creates some internal circulation and that internal circulation of the molecules allowed the droplet to move ahead for the translation, okay? So in the right hand side figure, you can see that, uh, you know, number of hydrogen bond has been plotted and you can find out that there is some sort of internal circulation of the droplet in the left hand side figure where some molecules have been traced, which showed circulation in the left hand side figure. Go ahead, please, next one. So we have also seen that uh, electrode switching and the effect of charge concentration is very important in this case. Switching frequency has been shown in the uh, left-hand side figure. And then uh, right-hand side figure, we have actually shown the charge concentration, okay? So different uh, charge concentration and electrode switching frequency is very uh, important in this situation. Okay, some of the uh, transient uh, figures have been shown in the bottom most figure also. So you can see the droplet is being stretched whenever it is actually translating. Yes, please, next one. Now we'll be coming uh, after showing the uh, you know, volume of fluid based macro scale simulation and micro scale molecular dynamic simulation, how these two can be coupled and uh, show some of the simulations of uh, coupled MD volume of fluid simulation. Okay, so here we have domain decomposition. Okay, I'll show you soon, soon uh, that what are the techniques available in literature. Next one, please. 
So you can see in the right hand side figure, we can have decomposition in the spatial scale as well as we can have decomposition in the time scale. Okay, so depending on that, we are having either domain decomposition or you know time parallel seamless or time brushed kind of uh, simulations. Okay, I'll be showing you our simulation, which is domain decomposition and time parallel. Okay, next one, please. Yeah, so here I'm showing you the spatial scale uh, uh, decompositions. So you can see that the first one actually we have done, which is most difficult as because two uh, domain, micro domains, microscopic and macroscopic domains are actually running parallelly. On the other hand, serial and embedded uh, simulations are a little easier as because we can see that only a small domain for microscopic to simulate, get the information and pass it on to the uh, macroscopic uh, simulation. So we are doing the domain decomposition. Next one, please. Yeah, so here it is the time uh, uh, decoupling. So you can see that we are having three different types of schemes, okay, where both the uh, times are uh, going parallelly for the macro scale and micro scale. Okay, that is called time parallel. And it can be also like this time rust. So some of the micro scale simulations will be doing and then one time step for the macro scale will be happening. And on the other hand, seamless is also there. So for our case, we are using the time parallel one. Next one, please. Next one, please. Yeah, so uh, the left-hand side part of the uh, formulations already I have shown you where you can see the volume of fluid equation for macro scale simulation. Okay, on the right hand side, I have shown you the molecular dynamic simulation, but as the molecular dynamic simulation will be done at the bottom of the uh, CFD simulation. So what we have to do, the potential uh, uh, calculation will not be a two body potential calculation. This will be a multi body potential calculation. So we have taken SW model for water. So that has been uh, shown in the right hand side. Okay, and the rest force calculation and integration has been done in a similar way as I have shown you in the previous slides using lamps. Next one, please. Yeah, so here I have tried to give you that how the data from the molecular scale to the uh, you know, macroscopic uh, volume of fluid scale is being exchanged. So there is one CPL library which we use, which takes the data from a CFD dataset and passes it on to the MD dataset. And the vice versa also happens. That means some of the information from MD dataset is also being passed through CPL library to the CFD dataset. Eventually, we give the velocity of the molecules to the CFD dataset using a chunk. And on the other hand, the density of the volume of fluid uh, method is actually being transferred as the alpha in the uh, or the void fraction in the molecular dynamic simulation. Next one, please. Uh, so uh, in this case, whenever you are giving as molecular dynamic uh, scale is having lots of uncertainty, so smoothing is very important. So we do spatial smoothing as well. I'll not take much time, so please go to the next one. Yeah, so here I have tried to show that whenever there is some sort of boundary between the molecular scale and the CFD scale, at the junction, you have to give uh, some sort of additional boundary force. This is necessary for uh, interaction between the molecular scale and the CFD scale. So this we have given over here, some high density packing of the molecule happens at the boundary in the in the in the uh, buffer zone so that how to tackle that i have shown you over here using some boundary force in the next slide i'll be showing you the nature of the force next one please next one please yeah so here this is the force uh, uh, no uh, please go to the previous one once yeah, so here I have shown the nature of the force. In the figure, you can see the nature of the force based on the distance from the free surface of the water has been plotted, and this has been fed in the in the volume of fluid code so that once again you can get the uh, interaction potential properly. Uh, some schematic diagram of the uh, sorry, some uh, functional form of this force have been shown in the boxes in the left hand side and right hand side respectively. Next one, please. Yeah, so this is the schematic diagram of the algorithm, whatever you are following. So you can see in the left hand side, we are having the lamps, right hand side, we are having the open foam, and in between, we are having the CPL library. It is actually taking the information from both the scales and it is coupling. Okay, next one, please. 
Yeah, so here I have shown you the demonstration of uh, multi-scale, which we have shown in the you know, separate uh, manner in case of volume of fluid and molecular dynamics previously. Now you can see a combined simulation. So this kind of simulation for the volume of fluid based uh, simulation, we need not to give the contact angle. Molecular scale determines what is the contact angle and that information is being fed to the volume of fluid uh, formulations. So eventually you'll be finding out these are most accurate and having no uh, intervention from some sort of uh, interaction potential or some empirical correlations related to contact angle. Next one, please. So some validations have been also shown over here with complete MD and complete uh, volume of fluid method. Okay, and you can see that uh, this kind of simulation can also work for dynamic uh, issues. So in the bottom figure, you can see that uh, it, it has been shown that the drop rate is translating whenever there is some sort of uh, weightability gradient, chemical weightability gradient given on the surface. Next one, please. And this is my last slide, though there was video, but I wanted to show you over here that this kind of methodology perfectly works for breaking and making of interfaces in case of droplet splitting into two parts and droplet merging into, into, into a single one. This kind of methodology, multi-scale methodology has also worked. So in the bottom, you can find out that we are having the molecular framework for the, for the uh, substrate and as well as uh, a thin layer of the uh, droplets. Okay, but on, on top, we are having the volume of fluid simulation. So there was some movie, but unfortunately the movie I cannot play over here, but I can ensure uh, uh, you that uh, this kind of methodology perfectly works with the uh, breaking of making of interfaces. Okay, next one, please. Now, what is the road ahead? Road ahead is that now, you know, uh, this kind of modeling technique of multi-scale needs to be extrapolated further whenever two interfaces are dynamic in nature. Previous uh, uh, drop rate breaking and marching, whatever we have shown you, there we know that what is the contact point and where we are having the interface. So you know, placing molecules are very easy over here. But on the other hand, uh, if having two bubbles which are coming from orifices, where it will be margin that depends on the uh, you know, flow rate of the bubbles. So in this case, it will be very difficult uh, to predict that where the molecules need to be placed. Molecular domain will not be steady. Okay, so that, that is the next task. And then extrapolate this one for some uh, more thermophysical uh, properties, like it can be extrapolated for heat transfer issues like nuclear boiling or so in the right-hand side figure, exactly same thing we have shown over here. Okay, so these are the uh, next future work which can be done from the uh, multi-scale modeling, which is a small reduction. With this, I'll be um, uh, stopping over here. And uh, once again, sorry for my uh, personal side that there was some tech glitches. Thank you once again. The last one is showing multiple scales, but this is just representation. I just wanted uh, to convey over here that multi-scale simulation probably is similar for uh, predicting the proper physics of uh, this flow and uh, respecting uh, other applications. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, your valuable research on this platform. And I'm sure uh, this will certainly help the aspiring researchers to jumpstart their work in this field. And it was really in uh, like uh, cutting edge. Uh, uh, what I want to ask, sir, is like, uh, mm, uh, what are the computational resources which you need for performing both, uh, like, uh, the multi um, this molecular dynamics and uh, the macro scale? Because certainly there is a penalty on the computational side, uh, resources side. Okay. Hello? Very nice question. Uh, actually, the uh, target of this multi scale simulation is the computational resources. Yeah. So, means, uh, whenever you go for molecular simulation, you know that extrapolating that one for macro scale will be very, you know, near to impossible as because this is highly challenging uh, to handle the computational uh, framework required. On the other hand, this macroscopic simulation is easier to solve, but it requires some sort of uh, you know, guideline. The problem, whatever I have shown you there, that requires some sort of contact line information. Okay. Yeah. So now this multi-scale method is somewhere in between. Uh, 
think in complete molecular simulation, but as it is not dependent on empirical law, definitely it will be a little bit uh, you know, complex in simulation as compared to macro scale uh, phenomena. So this is somewhere in between, I should say. So if you want to know that what is the computational time uh, in, in actual scenario, so all these macro scale simulations have completed within a day of simulation, okay? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, complete uh, molecular simulation, it ran something around, you know, uh, 20 to 30 days, but volume of fluid simulations are even faster. Volume of fluid simulations will be completing within six to seven hours. But once again, volume of fluid simulations are not properly predicting the interfacial dynamics, especially contact angle motion in case of problem. Right. So in that case, like um, if it is a hybrid one, then, uh... Like does this when you use the parallel uh, time parallel mode, huh? then uh, like for the macro scale model, does it wait for the information to get it from, get from the molecular dynamics model or like because yes, what yes. To the time time mapping yes. huh? yeah so time mapping is very important so what we do is actually uh, this is actually some sort of uh, I should say. Uh, Parallel simulation. So what we do for the molecular scale, we distribute in more number of uh, processors. Processors, on the right. other okay. hand, yeah. On the other hand, macroscopic uh, simulation will be giving to the less number of uh, processors, and then some, uh, you know, uh, compromisation uh, in the time. Yeah. Yes, weight balance kind of thing. We have. Okay. Uh, like. Uh... Uh, means what are your recommendations for incorporating this dynamic contact angle in the macro scale one means what models do you, if somebody wants to start yeah to be very frank you know we have also tried different types of uh, contact angle uh, you know formulations okay yeah. uh, even you know uh, very popular cox model also works very well in some cases but you know depends uh, that what is the uh, regime of uh, velocity you are actually working. If the velocity range of the droplet is very high, some of the formulations will not be working. And moreover, whenever new physics like electric field, magnetic field, acoustic field, these things are getting uh, uh, you know, joined with the uh, interfacial feature, uh, things become very uh, dirty, I should say, it means the prediction yeah. is difficult. Yeah. Even the correlations are not available. Yes, correlations are also not available. You have to validate, and then after validation, also there will be certain range of uh, applicability. Okay, so those are the things we the people are dealing uh, means nowadays in the macro scale simulation. So probably this is the future. I do not know this hybrid simulation where you need not to depend on any empiricity. This is right. maybe the future. Okay, great, sir. Uh, so. Let us see if we have any more questions. Okay, not many. So I think uh, we are done with the session. Thank you again, sir, for uh, sharing your uh, insights on this um, multi scale modeling. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, and once again, I'm sorry for all these. Uh, no issue, sir. This, this is a part and parcel of this uh, online mode. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Uh, I think. Yeah, there are. There is one question from uh, uh, Mr. Arvind, Dr. Arvind. I think. Uh, what are the parameters that couple MD with CFD? Yeah. What are the parameters that couple the MD with CFD? Yes. So what we take from uh, both sides, obviously, the velocity, as because. Uh, it is the fundamental parameter, okay? And the velocity, what we do, we uh, channelize in three dimension from the molecular scale and send it to the uh, you know, volume of fluid based uh, uh, CFD scale. And at the same time from MD, we actually take the presence of the molecule from where we do uh, construct the chunk and find out the local density, which we transfer to the CFD scale and find out the volume fraction over there. So uh, one slide I have shown you where uh, I have shown you the data which is being exchanged. So obviously velocity from molecular scale to CFD scale and CFD scale to uh, molecular scale once again. And uh, in the in the density side, uh, volume of fluid uh, is actually giving the density to the MD side. And from MD, uh, the void fraction is coming to the CFD side at present. Once we go for uh, heat transfer related issues, maybe some 
you know, or heat transfer or any other uh, physical issues like electric field or acoustic field, some more data needs to be, uh, you know, transferred, I believe. Okay. And uh, next question is, how much increase in the computational time is observed for coupled MD of approach in comparison with the WAF? I think that has been all Just now I have, just now I have replied. Yeah, yeah that has been answered now. Yeah, some simulations are three times. Okay, but whereas uh, in terms of MD, we are actually having three times, three to four times improvement also. So as it is a multi-scale simulation, it is somewhere in between. But the important point is that here you need not to depend on any sort of empiricity. Empirical data, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so thank you, sir, once again. Thank you. And, uh, we take a leave. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for the nice opportunity given to me. Organizers, thank you very nicely, managed conference. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Damdal. Welcome, sir. Can I log out now? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for chairing this section. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I can leave. I can also leave now. Yes, sir. Sure. Sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Welcome and uh, thanks for managing it nicely. There were a few uh, hiccups, but no problem. We are able to finish it off in right way. Yes, sir. Thank okay, you. then. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Bye. What's ahead is out there beyond the horizon, but some of us can see it. We can see a world where automobile accidents are a thing of the past. Because cars can think for themselves. We can see a world without climate change. A world powered by the sun and the wind and the waves. We can see a world where doctors predict disease before it occurs using virtual models of the human body. We can see a world connected as one community, thanks to communication networks accessible to all. At ANSYS, we can see exactly what the future brings. Or rather, what we bring to the future. Through the power of simulation, we are enabling innovators to create this new world for everyone. Only then can we engineer what's ahead. What do we mean when we say all you need is an idea and intel inside? That in today's fast-moving, high-tech world, big ideas are powered by a one-of-a-kind partnership with Intel because our customer-first approach is more than just a byline. From the moment we put the silicon in Silicon Valley, Intel has been accelerating the industry in big ways, setting a course for a new era of bold innovation. No one else is this obsessed with engineering a brighter future. That's why we're driving the industry's biggest inflection points, putting intelligence where it's needed most, in ways that only Intel can with the multi-architecture approach that empowers our customers to transform their businesses from the inside out. We're democratizing AI in big ways, combining software and hardware to open up new possibilities. And we're moving that innovation around the world at lightning speeds with our advances in 5G. Collaborating with global operators and creating a new vision for networks of the future. We're taking intelligence and bringing it to the edge accelerating business outcomes with over 30,000 edge-to-cloud solution deployments. And we're taking that same innovation to the streets, deploying new technology and advanced data layers to make autonomous driving not only possible, but safe and seamless. Every day, we create world-changing technology that enriches the lives of every person on Earth. Making bold moves, because Intel has a unique portfolio breadth and depth plus the global scale to serve as an unparalleled catalyst for our partner's biggest ambitions. So if you've got a big idea, let's go off and do something wonderful together. 
As an engineer, whether your product is in electronics, construction, medical engineering, or nearly any other industry, heat transfer is an important factor in the design. Let's say you want to optimize the design and performance of a heat exchanger. How can you test different parameters without running expensive tests and developing prototypes each time? You can simulate thermal effects, saving time and money while still getting accurate results. With ComSol Multiphysics in the Heat Transfer module, you can simulate all the modes of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Don't stop there. You can couple your heat transfer simulations with other physics and modules to create multi-physics models. Think about the design of a jet engine. What about a microwave oven, a laptop, or even a steering wheel? Almost every product involves temperature-dependent processes and materials. With multi-physics simulation, you can model thermal stress, microwave and induction heating, joule heating, and non-isothermal flow to obtain accurate material property values. Setting up and running a simulation is simple. No matter the physics being modeled, the workflow is always the same. Let's get back to our heat exchanger, modeled in ComSol Multiphysics. You are free to assign pressure and temperature dependent materials to the geometry and couple the turbulent flow and heat transfer equations using the multi-physics node to conveniently implement non-isothermal flow. After your simulation is complete, narrow or expand the focus of your simulation to fulfill your analysis objectives and to optimize the design of your product. What's ahead is out there beyond the horizon, but some of us can see it. We can see a world where automobile accidents are a thing of the past. Because cars can think for themselves. We can see a world without climate change. A world powered by the sun and the wind and the waves. We can see a world where doctors predict disease before it occurs using virtual models of the human body. We can see a world connected as one community, thanks to communication networks accessible to all. At ANSYS, we can see exactly what the future brings. Or rather, what we bring to the future. Through the power of simulation, we are enabling innovators to create this new world for everyone. Only then can we engineer what's ahead. What do we mean when we say all you need is an idea and intel inside? That in today's fast-moving, high-tech world, big ideas are powered by a one-of-a-kind partnership with Intel because our customer-first approach is more than just a byline. From the moment we put the silicon in Silicon Valley, Intel has been accelerating the industry in big ways, setting a course for a new era of bold innovation. No one else is this obsessed with engineering a brighter future. That's why we're driving the industry's biggest inflection points, putting intelligence where it's needed most, in ways that only Intel can with the multi-architecture approach that empowers our customers to transform their businesses from the inside out. We're democratizing AI in big ways, combining software and hardware to open up new possibilities. And we're moving that innovation around the world at lightning speeds with our advances in 5G. Collaborating with global operators and creating a new vision for networks of the future. We're taking intelligence and bringing it to the edge accelerating business outcomes with over 30,000 edge-to-cloud solution deployments. And we're taking innovation to the streets, deploying new technology and advanced data layers to make autonomous driving not only possible, but safe and seamless. Every day, we create world-changing technology that enriches the lives of every person on Earth. Making bold moves, because Intel has a unique portfolio breadth and depth plus the global scale to serve as an unparalleled catalyst for our partner's biggest ambitions. So if you've got a big idea, let's go off and do something wonderful together. As an engineer, whether your product